Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're just tuning in, if you're just this is your first time of watching me, welcome. Join the family. This is Cheesy of Cheesy Nation. But if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back and thanks for tuning back to my video. Well, as you can see by the title, you'll be getting to know me plus the story time of how I've been living in pain for like 22 years of my life. Yeah, I'll be 22 this year. So, stick around. But before that, I will first start with my get to know me. Yeah, and I brought my breakfast. All right. My tea. And my bread and egg and boiled egg. So sorry, I'm going to be eating while I answer this. Yeah, but I did get to know me, sorry. I just meant that my head would let me first drink my tea. I finally figured how to open it. Yeah, so it's like this. I'm just drinking my tea. <laughs> hmm. So, my first question is my first question is like, what's your name? Well, my name is Chimenya Uba. I already said it in my first video. If you've not watched that, the link is in the description. Go and watch it. So my name is Shania Oba. And how old am I? I'm 21, going to 22. Um, I'll be 22 next month. That's August 18. So what surprised me with the birthday gift? My hands are open to your gift. My favorite color is I don't particularly have a favorite color. My favorite color is oh ah blue, not blue. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today. My favorite color is white, gold, and black. I just love when you mix. Gold and black is just beautiful, and when you mix white and black or white and gold, it's beautiful. So that's it for me. And okay, my relationship status. Okay, my relationship status. Um, still single. Yeah, I'm still single. Um. I'm not, not that they don't used to come, they used to come, but I've not really had, let's say, the mind for that now, because I have lots of things in my head. Sorry, I'm eating egg. Come on, join me. <laughs> so, I'm single. I'm ready to meet you if you're serious. Yeah. Okay, my favorite subject. Well, when I was in secondary school, I can say my favorite subject was between English, government, and economics. In my secondary school, wow, my government was a 10 out of 10. Like, I would pass my government, my economics, English, I used to pass it very well, but sometimes this time I'm down. Like I'm high, I have a low grade, maybe like a B instead of an A. So, but for economics, then in secondary school, I would always pass it. Government, I would always pass it. Even in my Y, like, I think I got government and economics A one. Yeah, in my in my senior Y, yeah. And also in my GC, I passed those two. So, 
height. My favorite subject should be economics because I love, you know, I love all the concepts, the economics, the business, the accounting, and obviously, um, I'm into that business line and hopefully one day, I have my own business. So, state of origin. Mm. I'm from Abia State, Osisioma Ungwa to be precise. So, all my Osisioma people, all my Ungwa people, hi! Hope you can see that your girl has come out. So, I need you guys to subscribe to my channel. That is what I need you guys to do. Subscribe to my channel, you know. Help me. That is if you want, like, if you want to subscribe to my channel, you can subscribe to my channel. The link is here. Subscribe, subscribe, and give this video the thumbs up. I told you I'm just starting. This is my second video. Get to know me. So, back to the question. It says, do you have any crush? Yeah, yes, I have a crush. Let's say crush, a crush. I have people or guys that actually crush on. No. Like. When not celebrity crush, I think I don't have any celebrity crush. Sorry, I don't have any celebrity crush, but I have crushes. Like, you know, when you are in, a, in an environment, in a surrounding, yeah, you get to see guys that you actually like, or something draws you to them. Well, I have people I crush, not a particular person. Cute guys, guys with sense, guys that have a set compassion. Mm -hmm. So I have crushes. Yes, I have. So why am I on YouTube? Huh? I think I need to keep this earth to elaborate. Why I'm on YouTube? Why I'm on YouTube is not to be the normal. Influencer, beauty, makeup, but I can add as those ones if I learn. I don't really know how to make up. You can see, I'm all natural. I don't really know how to make up. But I'm on YouTube to pass a message. Like I said in my first video, I'm on YouTube to pass a message. I told you I'm going to be telling you how I've been living with pain. For over 22 years of my life, even the recent one that just happened that made me become homeschooled. I wasn't homeschooled, I was in I was going to a fiscal school, yeah. I was in a university doing going for lectures, writing exams. I was already even going to 300 level before my, my sickness struck. Or should I say that before I had an issue with my health? Let me just put it like that. So, I am on YouTube to pass a message to, you know, to give hope to those who feel they've lost hope and to give hope to those who feel it's over for me, it's done for me. Like, I am sickle cell anemic, I'm a sickle cell survivor and I know the struggle we face every single day. I know the struggle I face every single day. But... Let me be done with the get to know me, then I will elaborate more on the story time. So, religion. Okay, I'm a Christian. Christianity is my religion. So, that's it. Who's your best friend? Who's my best friend? It's my best friend. She a little bit. Hey. <laughs> okay. First of all, my best friend would be my dad. Why I say so is because he's been there for me. You know, you know, I'm, I'm mostly sometimes I, I'm in the hospital. Sometimes I'm always at home. Sometimes I'm sick. He's always there. Like he'd come to me. He'd be like, "You'll be fine. Don't worry." As in. I call my dad my dad of life. Like he's my best friend. Like he can whenever I'm sick or sick, he 
can just come to me encourage me he's a pastor he can just be a reverend he can just come to me encourage me say don't worry god will see you through he will pray for me he will tell me encouraging words and sometimes he'll just come in the night when i'm having my crisis i don't say my mom don't do it so my mom needs to check up on me but his own is like special that's why he's like he's he made me his pet like his favorite daughter out of all and like sometimes in the night when everybody they are sleeping and i'm having my crisis i call them my mom will come my mom will give me drugs massage me and go inside he he will come he will pray for me and he will talk to me sometimes he can just even sit down there and wait for my pain to go down before he go back to the room like my dad is my my best friend like i have friends but i cannot really say i have like a close or best friend i just have friends and if you know me like if you're watching this video and you're my friend you you know that i'm not that kind of person that just becomes someone's friend i'll first watch you and i'm happy with just one friend if i just have a friend out of a whole crowd like a friend that is trusted a friend that will be there for me and i'll be there for them even if they are too fine but i don't have a best friend what course what school am i in okay i was in Ebony state university abakaliki i was studying accountancy then i fell ill and came back home i fell ill 2020 it fractured my hip and then the pain and everything i had to come back home because it was also covid 19 lockdown so i had to come back home and then from there the treatment and everything i couldn't continue in ebony city university i had to apply for an online to an online school that is next fall to university usa and hopefully i was given admission to study Bachelor's in Business Administration, so that's what I'm studying now, and hope, like hopefully for me, it's been a good journey. I haven't really started, and to start my lectures officially August first, so that's just it. Mm, what course am I studying? I've already told you guys, I'm studying Business Administration in Lexford University. They have a study center in Lekki, so I haven't really gone to the study center. This is my first time of actually going to an online school. That's why I'm homeschooled. <sighs> now, time for my story. I'll tell you guys. Yeah, I've been living. Sorry, I want to see it. <sighs> oh. I've been living in pain for 22 years of my life. For 22 years of my life, I've been living in pain. From childhood, let's say, from childhood. To teenhood, to adulthood now, I'm quite believing in pain and I'm used to it. Yeah. Um, I don't want to give long story because I don't want this vlog to be long. It's already 14, 12. Like, I don't want it to be long. So I'm just going to cut the long story short. In my other video, we are going to be doing a full story on sickle cell and what you should know about us i'm going to be throwing more light about my foundation but for now i'm just going to tell you about what happened last year that is how i fractured my hip and how the treatment and process has been for me so like i told you i've been in pain for 22 years of my life and it's been a struggle for me you know 
you ask any sister of survival, they will tell you being like living in pain and actually trying to cope with your surroundings, cope with your friends and and everything around you is just like a struggle. But you take up the challenge, that's it. So I fractured my hip twenty twenty. That is last year during the lockdown. I know God is very, 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 very wonderful. You know, last year when I fractured my hip, it hadn't even been. It was not even fractured. Like it was just a normal pain. I was admitted into the hospital for that fracture, and it was just like a normal pain. And I thought, oh, I'm really used to pain, so forget about that one. And I was going, going for lectures, doing my normal things. You know, I don't let pain hold me down because I'm really used to it. And so I kept on stressing the leg, the right hip, the leg, and everything. And then it became worse. Like I had to go to my school hospital. That is FETA. If you know very everything, you know FETA. I had to go there, do an x ray, and they saw my bone and actually told me that it was partially fractured. It hadn't been fractured by then. And I was like, okay, thank God. And then, you know, we are in school and we don't really have money like that. Students, we are managing, so I never really took care of myself without well the way the doctor said I should do. I should take care of myself. So then God just wonderfully made should I say COVID nineteen is not should I say COVID nineteen came in for my good because after that time I went to the hospital Every, like I still feeling pains, like serious pains, and I'm not the type of person that gives up easily. I still kept on going to school. I still kept on attending lectures, doing assignments, and that was the time we were actually on strike in school. And then they told us the government said everybody should go back to their houses because of the COVID nineteen lockdown. I was so pissed. I was so angry. I was like, what kind of rubbish is this? What? Why did they tell us to go back? We are not, not even done with our exams, we are not even done with tests, and they want us to go back. Not knowing that God was actually trying to avoid something for me. So finally we came back home, and then I told my parents about it, and they did not know how that it was actually hip fracture, and something that was serious, and they were telling me, you are a strong girl, match, 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 don't allow this pain to limit you, match, match. And for me, I was like, yes, I was marching the leg, making sure I do exercise with the leg, not knowing it was even breaking it the more. Like, I don't want to cry because I'm a strong girl and many, I've cried so many times, I've cried so, crying here right now, just be like a pity party and I hate, I hate pity, like, I see, I hate anybody just coming, anybody just looking at me and saying, Oh, sorry, I actually where you're walking, and that is what is happening right now. I just hate it. And like, well, I just have to make sure I get better because I actually hate this. I hate pity, anything pity. I don't like the fact that. I'm supposed to tell I go to pain and I haven't really told my friends about it. I still struggle with the pain, I go through the pain. I'm going to insert a video here that's going to show you how I was in the hospital after the fracture because it eventually broke, like my right hip bone came out of the socket and Sorry guys, I forgot to add the clip. We'll do that in my second video about sickle cell. Sorry. Guys, if you don't want to know the pain I went through, you don't want to know. Like, I could not move. I was conscious, but I could not move because the pain was so much, 
I thought I was going to die at that point. I felt like oh, God was calling me. Your daughter, oh yeah, come to heaven, come to heaven. But I was. I said no. God, this is not your plan for me. I can't just go right now. I have dreams. I have goals. I have visions. I have things I want to accomplish in this life. I want to. I bless my parents. They try so much, especially my dad. I don't want to. Like I don't want to make him like try to lose faith in me, but it's just so annoying. Like you actually know something is wrong with you. You're not like normal. You're normal friends that are healthy, and you know that this pain comes every single time, and it's not even the pain right now. It's actually. Uh, talking like I may just start crying that's just it and for me I don't like telling my friends about it I'm this kind of person that I like hiding my problems I would love you to be there when I'm celebrating that's it but whenever I'm having this issue or problem I just hide it I don't like keep my friends knowing that I'm a sick person or I'm actually going through this So that's it. Came to the hospital. I we started doing physiotherapy after it had fractured. After I had gone to so many things, I got so many things, and I had to come back home. I had to drop out of school. Drop out. I had. To, I didn't drop out. I had to pause my schooling. Like. And had to come and start all over again, and that is one thing with we sickle cell survivors. We don't know when it hits us, and if it's the time when we, are, if it's the time when we are vulnerable, we end up in the hospital. And when we are in the hospital, it's not just a week. Sometimes it can be a month, two months, and. Like it's so painful when you, know, you actually come, like you're actually out, like you're actually out of. I don't know how to explain it, but you know, like, like I don't want to cry because I'm explaining this thing right now. It's just you know, the type of person that cries, so don't cry. As I was saying, it's just, we just, I was going for therapy. Then I started using crutches. I never believed I would use crutches in my life. I'm the kind of, you know, for sickle cell patients, we are more, we are more taking care of people at home, and that's why we're homeschooled. It's for people that have serious types, and for people that, don't want to go out and um, online school is there for you but for me for me mine is not that serious but whenever it comes oh my god like it's just like every part of my body I just want to cut everything off because the pain starts from the hand and then it comes and spreads all over my body and I just start having pain like this has happened to me for 22 years of my life and God has been helping me and I'm very grateful to God like I owe everything to God Almighty like several dead things but several times I would have died but God still kept keeping me safe so um should I say I'll do a part 2 of this video because this is so long i don't want to make it long the more just i can't i can't just i can't just deal with it but by the grace of god after using crutches i progressed to one stick and if you see if you watch the beginning of this video there's a way i'm working it's because i haven't fully recovered yet so 
I'm still feeling some pains, obviously. I'm feeling pains and I haven't really been going for my therapy. So soon when I continue going for it, I'm going to be blogging and showing you guys everything. And hopefully you guys are going to recover with me. So that's why I want you to subscribe to this channel if you want to. And turn on your notification bells because this is a journey for me. I'm also going to be sharing fun contents too. But I'm mostly going to be documenting my life. Documenting everything about my life. Like I have wanted to start this YouTube channel for long. But you know, when you have health issues... You just have to first take care of your health first before you think of just going or doing something. I did not even touch my food like that because I wanted to talk to you guys more about this. So me being on YouTube is not to do the normal uh, makeup, normal uh, going out. This obviously I'll do that, but. My purpose of starting this YouTube is to educate people who have one disorder or the other. Is it autism? Is it asthma? Is it like you guys can be the best if you want to be? You see me, I don't allow all this to to hold me down. I've been fighting this for 22 years of my life and I'm not going to allow this hold me down. I'm going to get to that to that place, that dream, that goal I have for myself, I'm going to get there. So, you guys, I believe you people can do the same for me. Just keep on going. Don't allow anybody to bully you and tell you you're weak, you're sick, you're, you're half dead. Because sometimes that's what they say, especially in Nigeria, where people don't really know about the sickle cell. They sometimes they cause to be witches because we get sick almost every time. And some of, sometimes people who are ignorant of it, they are tired of the, the child or they give the child to the orphanage or they abandon the child. That is not right. We sickle cell warriors need caregivers, people who can take care of us, people who can show us. So that is what we need. That is why at this point right now, I'm not, I'm not mentally ready for like anything, relationship. If you're coming as a friend, be my friend but you see something of relationship right now I'm not mentally like I'm not mentally okay for that for me to be strong at this point is the grace of God like mentally because I've been through hell I'm not just saying this for pity I hate pity I'm just telling you or you guys who are going through the same thing it may be sickle cell it may be something else so this is like a super power for us, so don't allow anybody to intimidate you. Prove them wrong. Show them you can do better than them. That's what you show them. Just show them you can do better than them. Thanks for watching this video. Hope I educated you on. I didn't actually educate you. I just encouraged you and told you of how I've been living with sickle cell for the two years of my life. My, there will be a video where I'm going to talk about sickle cell, what it entails, and why, why people should help us because we need your help. Many of us don't really tell to hide from me. Like for me, I've been hiding it from my friends for like 18 years of my life. So when I entered, was it 20 years that I started saying, ah. I'm ready. I don't care if anybody looks at me. Anymore. I'm ready to tell my friends. And if you're watching this video, and my friend, that you've not known that I seek to sell anemic, that's it. So take care of yourself. My dad just entered. Dad, come and say hi to the vlog. Come and see my dad for life. Say hi to the vlog. Hi. No, come cut this time. Hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> That's my dad. That's my dad of life. He just came to check up on me now. You see how he's so caring. Okay, bye. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Please like my channel. Please. I have beautiful content I want to put up for you. <laughs> he's covering my feet for me. <laughs>
Okay, bye.